Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and here are the four big stories for today. So in the first story, the Senate is now facing a tough choice when Speaker Johnson pulls this new bill forward and they have to decide, well, they're not going to talk about the Senate bill. They're going to talk about this other thing that will have some other ideas, like um, maybe it'll have uh, new permits for liquefied natural gas or seizing Russian assets or whatever is in it. Senators are going to have to decide what to do because the situation is dire. Senators like Senator Butler of California are saying things like, I think whatever form it comes in, whatever form it takes to get the aid to Ukraine, that's the form we go with. Republican Senator Mitt Romney says, that's fine. It's we're talking about how maybe it's a loan, right? He said, that's fine. It's a distinction without a difference because it's unlikely Ukraine would ever have to pay it back. It would be forgiven, but getting help to Ukraine as soon as we can is something we should be doing. And so they're wrestling with this and thinking through what the new next phase will be like. Okay, big story number two. So... <laughs> Putin's ally, Petrushev, says that NATO is helping attacks on Russia from Ukraine. Okay, let's say that they are. Uh, he, again, he's saying that NATO is behind this. and and But Petrushev and Putin tend to look at the world like Russia is still the Soviet Union that it once was. It's really not. Russian Security Council Secretary Nikolai Petrushev, one of Putin's most powerful allies, said the 75 year years of NATO history since its founding on April 4th, 1949, has shown it to be a long-term source of danger, crisis, and conflict. Really? NATO is the source of danger, crisis, and conflict? Um, so I started thinking about this, and I was thinking, okay, if you compare NATO against Russia, there, it blows it out of the water, but just compare Russia against all the other countries around it. Russia, GDP, $2.24 trillion in U.S. dollars, right? So what's uh, Germany? Germany is $4.082 trillion, blows it out of the water. What about even Britain, 3.09? Again, as it compared to 2.24, how about France? 2.779 trillion. That's the gross domestic product comparing. You got to get to Italy before Russia actually beats it. Italy has 2.05. Russia has 2.24 trillion. The difference is that Russia is sitting on a huge stockpile from the former Soviet Union of vast amounts of weapons that they're now dwindling down, but that's what's keeping them going. Okay. Okay. At the same time, uh, at the Ministry of Defense meeting, Russian Defense Minister Shoigu casually reported the upgrading of the Black Sea Fleet because they're adding a new patrol ship. But, of course, they didn't say probably anything about how they're hiding their ships now on the Russian coast behind four barges so that sea babies can't get them or what's been sunk. I, I would imagine that didn't feature uh, very highly at that event. Okay, fourth story, Ukraine's election day dawned with no vote in sight and little appetite for one for now anyway. So what's happened was that uh, on Sunday, they were supposed to, all other things being equal, have had uh, a new election for president if the war hadn't intervened. So uh, Ukraine would have voted on Sunday uh, in a year where billions get the chance to cast a ballot. People here would have given their verdict on the presidency of Volodymyr Zelensky. But there was a war, and in a time of war, well, things change. So when you see something like this, and you will see things like this, how actor destroyed Ukraine just yesterday, presidential elections were supposed to take place in Ukraine, which Zelensky canceled. He didn't cancel it. The legal term of his presidency, one way or another, is ending. So they're saying he's no longer legitimately the president. Five years ago then, in fact, it became clear that Zelensky decided not to give Ukraine and its people a chance. Although it was then there that they had every opportunity to change the fate of the country for the better. Okay, this is Philistine pig ignorance when you say stupid stuff like that. Because the reality is that according to their constitution, in a time of war or mobilization, like they're in, they do not have elections. Now, in the United States, uh, one of my viewers asked me about this. They said, I'm really worried for the, uh, the United States that Donald Trump will be president of the United States and then they'll do something, declare martial law, and then you won't be able to have elections. In our history, even during the Civil War, we held elections during a time of war. FDR was re-elected during time of war in World War II. We just keep rolling with the elections. But this was prohibited by law in the Ukrainian constitution. So it's not quite the same thing. 
Okay, last little bit. When you see stuff like that, just know that it's something like this. This is a novel way of having a toothbrush cap. Um, the only difference is it's white instead of, I mean, if you could make it brown or black, it would be probably more uh, of a selling point. But that's what you're looking at when you see something along these lines. It's just, just take it for what it's worth. Okay, thank you for the likes, the the time, the shares, the subscribes, the coffees. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.